Good morning, friends. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a privilege to be able to share with you this morning. And as I share, I'd like you to cast back your minds of the last few weeks to the readings that we've, uh, we've been dealing with in our churches. We've looked at the parable of the lost coin, the parable of the lost sheep. We've looked at the parable of the shrewd or the wide, a wise manager. We've looked at the story of, of Lazarus and the rich man. And all of these stories are told at the same setting. Jesus is sitting down with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, as well as the tax collectors and the sinners of the community. And so he really does have uh, the would-be saints and sinners in his midst as he's speaking to them. And each story speaks about worth and value, about how God goes out to find those who are lost and to bring them back into the community, about how God calls us to use our wealth to help others uh, out of their systems of oppression. And, and really, that, that story of Lazarus and the rich man juxtaposes extreme wealth and extreme poverty and, uh, and, 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 and really shows the, what the rich man could have done to have aided and alleviated the suffering of Lazarus in his world. And after all of these stories, Jesus kind of as a side turns to his disciples and still within the same setting. So the, the tax collectors and the Pharisees and, and all of them, the saints and the sinners, they're all still there, but Jesus turns to his disciples. And I, I want to read just what he says to them. The apostles said to Jesus, increase our faith and he replied if you have faith as small as a mustard seed you can say to this mulberry tree be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep would he say to the servant when he comes in from the field come along now and sit down to eat would you not rather say prepare my supper get yourself ready and wait on me while i eat and drink after that you may eat and drink would he thank the servants because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you've done everything you were told to do, you should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. And it's interesting, after all of these teachings of, of, um, of oppression, of wealth, imbalance, of, of value and worth and dignity that Jesus has been speaking to as he spoke to this community, these are already worldly and communal aspects and, and, and ways of looking upon one another and treating one another, Jesus suddenly speaks of faith. And he doesn't speak of faith as something that is a reward. He speaks of as a master and a servant. A servant does what a servant is told to do. A servant does what is expected of them and they aren't commended for it and they aren't given a reward for it. They're simply told, well, you know, you've done what you're told to do, now go do the next thing. And for Jesus, the idea of faith was always about duty, never, never about reward. Somehow our understanding of faith is twisted in our world. That we think that if we have faith, we will go to heaven one day. And then that's the be all and the end all of it. That it's just a means to a reward. And that was never what Jesus taught. Jesus always taught duty. In fact, the faith of Jesus Christ was that God came down as a human being and saw the potential of the world, the potential for change, the potential to realize holiness and righteousness and justice. That was the faith of Jesus. That was the faith of God in this world, the faith in the creation, the faith that we can be better if we were just taught and pushed in the right direction. And that's what Jesus is teaching not to have a faith in a reward that was the folly of the rich man in the story of the rich man and lazarus that he believed he was entitled to a reward but rather his duty was that he would serve and care for the poor in his community for lazarus and so the question for us is how do we go out who is it that we are meant to be serving who is the lazarus in our midst what is our duty today because friends, if we aren't asking that question, then we've missed the point of it all. And so I pray for you today. I pray that you would have the faith of Jesus Christ that sends you out into the world to make a change. 
I pray that you might have the faith of Jesus Christ that leads you to have compassion for your hurting neighbor and to lace up your boots and go and seek those who are lost. I pray that you might have the faith of Jesus Christ that looks upon the world and sees only what it could be and seeks to do something about that. I pray that your faith doesn't wait for the afterlife for the world to get better, but that your faith leads you into deeper, abundant living in this life so that the kingdom of God may break through wherever it is God leads you. So let us pray. A good shepherd, lead us to your lost sheep so that we might help them hear your voice. O wise manager, send us to your poor and destitute people so that we might help them pay their worldly debts and tell them that you have covered the rest. O resurrected Lord, let us see the Lazaruses in our midst so that they might know relief today in your kingdom that has been brought to this earth. O Jesus Christ, grant us your faith so that we may see the world as you do, bursting with potential and ready to receive your grace. Amen. So thank you, friends. May you have a blessed day. And may the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ reign in us all, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.